Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And today I'm in Lightroom Classic and I'm working on a landscape photo. And I started realizing something, I do videos about Lightroom and a number of my recent videos and they're all in that playlist if you wanna check them out. But they're really um, focused on how you can adjust color and do color grading and things like that. And I tend to think of color grading as something that you do kind of later in the edit, maybe at the end of the edit, to kind of unify the color look across a photo. And in doing so, I use tools like calibration and color grading, the tool, which is like an upgraded version of split toning. And it's powerful and it works and it's great. But I also realized that I often will do colors a lot more targeted and specific and adjust colors with masks. And that's really what this video is about because you have so much control with the powerful masking tools in Lightroom and the ability to control those colors in specific areas, be really targeted and get a beautiful color look without really using color grading tools and things like that to kind of do it at the end. In other words, you can do it targeted as you go in masks. That's what we're doing in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got this photo here, which is of course too dark. Uh, I often shoot a bit darker anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and brighten this photo up, bring that up and bring the highlights down. I wanna drop those and I'm gonna lift the shadows pretty significantly. So something about like that, I think. And then I'm gonna add in some contrast. These are really basic moves, kind of my getting started kind of approach. I also wanna warm this up a bit because this was a beautiful sunset. And I wanna bring some of that color back. And I wanna adjust this uh, tint as well as the temperature. And I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. I tend to do clarity more targeted in local areas with masks, but sometimes I'll do a little bit overall, like in this case. So if you take a look at the before, and the after, it's a much better starting point. And uh, the big thing here was really just adjusting the exposure and the light to give me a starting point where I can actually see the photo, I guess, because that's way too dark and now it looks much better. Now, before I jump further into this, I wanna remind you, if you haven't yet, I've got a free Lightroom editing guide that I provide for anyone that subscribes to my newsletter if you wanna check it out at the link below. And my newsletter goes out like once every week or two, sharing tips, tricks, ideas, and things like that. But if you want to check that out, you can get that free guide, which may help you with some editing tips and tricks and insights in Lightroom Classic. Uh, I'm jumping into masking now because that's really what this video is mostly about. I'm going to start with the sky mask, which is really just does a great job. Um, it targets the sky really well. I'm going to start by dropping the exposure and I'm doing about a 0.4 there. And I'm going to do a little bit cooler, like a negative one on temp, uh, temperature, uh, but like a positive 24, 25 on tint. And that's because I kind of like that magenta look in my sunsets. This is all uh, season to taste, uh, of course. But the other thing I like to do is smooth out my skies. And so I'm going to take the texture and the clarity down pretty significantly. And I'm going to add a little dehaze as well. So the uh, increase in the dehaze or dehazing, I guess, uh, you can see it's bringing back some of that color and giving me visibility into that tint that I added to, the, uh, to that section of the uh, photo, to the sky, right? So if you look at the sky before and after, I was able to add a nice little bit of color into the sky in a targeted way with a mask. And like I said, I'm gonna be saying that a lot in this video because that's really what this video is about. Now, the other thing that I really wanna accentuate, uh, and I'm gonna accentuate colors in lots of different areas, but the next thing I wanna do is really get a brush and I'm just gonna go in here to the water and I wanna highlight that water, or I should say isolate that water and really mask it in and do a job of just bringing up the color and the vibrance and things like that. So I'm gonna get this mask to just cover that water and then we're gonna be in business. Okay, something like that ought to work. Um, I recommend taking your time, going slow and being careful. I was kind of sloppy in fairness. Uh, because in videos, I tend to be in a hurry, even though I just cut out a little bit of what I was doing. I'd rather um, move along and get going. So one of the things I want to do is accentuate that color of that water. So I'm actually going to cool it off. And usually what I'm doing with a tint in skies, especially is going to the right. But in this case, the water, it is kind of green. So I'm going to go a little bit left. So maybe like a negative 22. Uh, 24 it looks like, and I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation. Um, I tend not to do a lot with the saturation sliders, but uh, sometimes if I'm really targeted, like in this case, I'll use them just a little bit. So if you look at the before, you can see the water's a little bit more muted and in, in color and darker, but I brightened it and made a little bit more green. So again, another 
targeted uh, mask focused on color. Now I'm going to do something that's not color related and this is just a shaping the light kind of move. I do this with masks all the time and honestly masking for me is very much about shaping light um, most of the time and that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to drop the exposure in that corner a little bit just to give me a little darkening there to kind of frame the image because I like to do that. Uh, but now what I want to do is move in and get an object mask. And these are great. I'm going to grab this square and I'm just going to come over here and try to grab that mountain. And it does a pretty good job. It's not always perfect, especially on an odd shape. And <laughs> that was actually perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So uh, take back that it's not always perfect thing. Uh, but in fairness, it's not always perfect. That worked out really well. That highlighted exactly what I wanted to do. And it's a sunset. It's hitting that mountain. The sun's obviously out of frame to the right. So I want to make it brighter and that's going to accentuate that light coming in from the right outside of the frame. I'm also going to warm it up a bit. So that's like a mid twenties. I think that looks pretty good. And then one of the great things about um, Lightroom masks is it includes point color and I love point color. I use it a lot uh, in my regular edits down below, not in the masking stack, if you will. But this is a great way to target these colors and get some you know accent to them right so i'm going to grab that color right there it picks the orange and all i want to do is give it a little bit more saturation to give it a little bit more pop and i'm gonna give a little bit of luminance as well so a little bit brighter a little bit more saturated so if you look at point color if you look at that mountain before and now it's just got a little bit more kick to it and overall um, the mountain before darker, a bit more muted, and now a bit brighter, a bit more saturated. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go in and add some clarity to that as well. Maybe a little bit of texture. I like to do that to things like rocks, mountains, of course, because it kind of just makes sense. So that mask has done a great job. Uh, and that was an object mask. So, so far we did a sky mask, we did a brush mask, we did an object mask. Uh, now I'm going to use a color range mask. There's so many great masking tools. I love them. Color range is, is a great one. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab a similar color to what I did before. And it's going to highlight most of the photo because there's a lot of that color. This is where I come in and use this refine slider. Taking it to the left is going to shrink the amount of uh, area in the photo that that color or that the mask is covering based on that color. So I'm taking that down pretty significantly. And now what I want to do is just bump up the exposure a little bit. I want to kind of brighten some of those areas. It's a good way to adjust uh, shadow and light, if you will, is with the color range mask. You would think it's just about color, but you're just picking the color and then you can do whatever you want with it. In this case, I'm making it a little bit brighter. Maybe I'll add a tiny bit of contrast and I'm actually going to add a little bit of temperature and tint as well. So I'm going to warm that up, give it a little bit, bit of tint. So I'm doing a brightening move here with the color range mask, but also a color temperature and tint adjustment. And that's why I'm talking about in this video, you can use these masks and be really targeted and then bump up different amounts of temperature, tint, point color, saturation, whatever it might be in different parts of the photo. And you end up getting the color look that you want, hopefully, uh, especially after some experimentation, but you end up getting a really nice color look without having to color grade the whole thing, if that makes sense. You're just being more targeted is really what it comes down to. So before adding this color range mask and picking that orange color, and then after, it's so all a little bit brighter, a little bit more intense because I increased the temperature and the tint in those areas. And this is me just kind of color grading the image, but with a mask, and in this case, a color range mask. So it's really powerful, it gives you a great uh, bit of control. And the next thing I want to do, of course, is get a luminance range mask. Another great mask, and I love using these, uh, these masks. I use them all the time. And what I want to do here, and I got to look at my notes because um, I went uh, pretty specific here. So I think I ended up something like this where my mask was pretty spread out, like maybe like that. And this one, let me see here. Okay, I ended up with something like that. If you're not familiar with luminance range masks or luminosity masks, I'll do more videos. I talk about them in that ebook that I mentioned. I've also got other videos here that cover them. Uh, but the bottom line is it's a mask based on light values. And something I like to do is uh, when I'm editing, especially when I'm a little bit towards the end of the edit, is highlight a lot of the midtones, which is what I've done here with a fade into the shadows and the highlights, and then give them a little bit of bump. Sometimes it's a bump in exposure, which is what I'm doing here. I'm 
give it a little bit of brightening. I'm also going to cool it off tiny, uh, just a tiny amount, like a negative 10, and then add a, a small amount of saturation. So again, just a, a really targeted color adjustment, mostly in the midtones, fading more into the highlights than in the shadows. But it's a nice way at the end of my edit to give it a little bit of a bump in color. So if you look at the before, the luminance range mask, and then after, it's got a little bit of extra color umph added, and that's really all that is about. And I'm done with mask. If you look at the mask overall, let me turn off all of them. That's what the photo looked like without any masking, just my basic edits in the basic panel. So pretty simple and straightforward, but with a lot of mass, six uh, specifically, five of them, I believe, that had color adjustments to them, gives you a lot of control over color. And then what I do is I've come back and I want to actually color grade the image now. So I'm not going to use the color grading, but I am going to go into calibration. It's kind of my favorite. I just, I, I love it, to be honest. Now what I want to do here, and this was something I got to through a bit of experimentation, is I ended up just moving the blues, both of them, to the negative. Both of the greens I moved to the positive. And again, this is just a pixel level color adjustment. It's adjusting the RGB values in each pixel. So it gives you some really beautiful and powerful control over the color in your image. You can see that's getting pretty intense there. Uh, but then when I work on the red, you'll see it's going to come down a little bit. I'm actually going to slightly reduce the red uh, hue and also reduce the saturation of the red. And so that's impacting the red values, the R values in each pixel. There you go. That gives me a beautiful, pretty intense though, color look overall. But if you look at the before and then the after, it's bumped it up quite a bit. And as I did in a previous video, if you get here and you're like, God, I like it, but it's a little too much, just go back to basic and take that saturation slider because these are global edits here and just pull that down a little bit. So maybe drop that a five or seven, maybe put on the vibrance a tiny bit, season to taste. But the bottom line is what you're able to do with all these masking tools is get a lot of control over color in specific targeted areas where you're just impacting the color where you want to impact it. Uh, and light as well. I do uh, light adjustments with masks probably every time, but the color adjustments come in really handy. And then your color grade, if you will, at the end, in this case, I used calibration and not color grading. You could use both or, or either. Uh, but in this case, I use calibration to apply a color look or color feel or color mood, a color grade, if you will, across the entire image at the very end to give me that last little umph to put it over the finish line and give it a nice little boost of color. And that, my friends, is how I was able to get that photo from basically a really dark kind of blah photo, but really it had a lot of color in it using mask and these color adjustments. I was able to bring it back. And I'm actually going to go back and add back a little bit of that saturation of vibrance because I do like it. I like my colors, but you can season to taste. Again, key issues here to work on are light and color. And I was able to do that with masks and target specific areas with color tools in those specific areas to get the color look that I want. That's how this one went, my friends. I hope it gives you some ideas about the kind of fun, powerful, and inventive things, really, that you can do with the masks in Lightroom. Check out my ebook if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon and leave comments. I will do what I can to reply to them and answer your questions. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more Lightroom videos. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.